construction. It was the first in the heartland to be this style of curtain wall construction. A lot of people walk down the street, but their perception is only eye level, and uh, a lot of things go overlooked. We were fascinated with the fact that when this building was conceived and built initially, it was the first high-rise office building, not only in Kansas City, but in Missouri, not only in Missouri, but all the surrounding states. So it was a bold statement. So we were building on a heritage of being transformative and adding vitality, but we're doing it a half century later. It was 52 years ago that James Kemper Jr. and his architect, John Murphy of Keen Simpson Murphy. Congress Tower is this kind of prominent monolithic structure here that I don't think anybody was really paying any attention to. And that was just kind of bizarre to me. So of course, that curiosity led me to start looking into it. And when I did, it started really kind of getting into how important this structure was and how historically relevant it was to Kansas City and, and the skyline here. It just kind of became very apparent that this was the exact kind of canvas for us to outlay that kind of new project and that new plan. It was built in 1964. At the time when this building was built, it was cutting edge technology. Obviously, we find ourselves 50 years down the road, and obviously there are bigger and better systems and more efficient systems. This actually used to be run by a steam chiller, which I'm happy to say is, I believe, demoed out now, I think that. The building was fed uh, by three independent boilers that look about like three, you know, number seven locomotives. And then obviously our boilers were very ineffective and, and outdated. And so those have been demoed and removed. And we're gonna come back in with really high efficient uh, natural gas fired boilers. Whereas the building now is a two pipe system which means, un unfortunately, if one guy on the end of the building is hot, the other guy on the other end of the building is freezing, and nobody's ever going to be happy, and you get a lot of phone calls. You either have to heat or cool. Yeah, you can't somebody needs to bring a sit <laughs> in Jimmy Carter, right? Put on a sweater, right? <laughs> yeah, right. And so what we have now is we'll have a new uh, four-pipe system. These old induction units obviously will be going away. We'll have zone climate control so that everybody can be comfortable in those commercial spaces. So where one side might be in the sun, very hot, the other side might not have the sun and be cooler, and you need both. And so the nice thing is with this closed loop heat pump system, we're basically moving warmth and cool to where it's needed and not wasting it where it isn't needed, which was the previous system. Since we already had a, cent a central system plan in place for the commercial users, what we did is go ahead and then build a common loop that ran for all the residential floors as well. And the biggest impact of that, it's a reduction in energy usage and cost to the actual residential dweller, the apartment dweller. They'll have their own electrical bill, they'll be on their own meter, and then the programmable thermostat also picks up on their kind of usage patterns. It'll start learning their, using, their user habits to the point that when they're there, it knows that they're there. When they're not there, it'll pick up on the patterns of when they lower and raise their temperature. It'll start actually doing the thinking for them to the point that uh, it, it becomes uh, completely autonomous. And because they have their own electric meter, at the end of the month, they know how much energy they're spending. And so they become a partner with us in determining comfort, cost, health, all of those things are part of creating a lifestyle where the entire community is part of energy efficiency, better health, and, and better climate profiles. This is the 70% of uh, the new film. Here's clear, and then here's what's the industry standard now. We kept the original glass, which helps our historic preservation profile but we applied a new film over that glass. And by analyzing all the films available, we could actually purchase a film today to replace the one that's there. But that's a lot more visible light through, but rejects all the frequencies of light that create heat. Uh, let's talk, what else can we talk about energy efficient? Oh, lighting, lighting's a big one. Yep. yep. So the entire building, including the residential spaces and including the commercial spaces, are, are all LED lighting. So our entire lighting package for the entire project, interior and exterior are LED lighting. LED means that we're using about a tenth of the energy of what's here now, but it lasts a lot longer in addition. So we have a lot lower cost to operate the system with LED lighting and we have a better quality of light. It's not a catchphrase anymore to say that uh, you know it's efficient, it's sustainable, it's uh, environmentally friendly or green. Those things uh, in the past may have been kind of seen that way. From the residents, it's, it's, a, it's a more conscious involvement now than it probably ever was, where they want to live in a building where the people are, the designers, the developers, the architects, the engineers, 
have put thought into how do we design a better product that uh, consumes less. That's not a novelty anymore, it, uh, it's expected. The city's at a, a point where we're really going through a dramatic shift in a number of areas that, are, that start to include larger issues like lifestyle, community patterns, financial patterns, and this building is, is an early leader, we hope, in, in that transformation. Thank you.